Welcome back to the Blender Frenzy Quarantine Series. I'm Justin, and I hope you're staying safe and healthy and haven't gone too crazy during your quarantine situation wherever you are and that you're able to get out at least a little bit. But if you are still cooped up at home, then follow me as we continue our toilet paper series. So we have finally completed our toilet paper, and it looks like this. We've modeled it, and we've textured it. And uh, I went with the Texture 03 that I used. Uh, I created by stencil painting, uh, and we made this texture map here. Uh, now that is opposed to the one we did with the projection painting, where we just took one image, and we did a projection from view, and then uh, painted that on like that. So you can see here it doesn't have as much detail. I mean, it will work uh, if we go over here I'll just and select our image. See, it works well enough, um, you know, if you absolutely need to just use one picture but this definitely could use more work and not work that i'm willing to put into it right now so uh, i decided just to go back with our original uh texture 03 there so that's what you're seeing so let's go back to our layout here and you notice that our object doesn't have any sort of lighting information on it it's just the texture and nothing else so let's change that by coming up here to our viewport shading options and click rendered view. And now we can see the lighting and shadow effects that we have from the light that we have in our scene, which is already giving this uh, a little bit more realistic look. Now I'm using the default light that I never ended up deleting. So if I scroll out here, you can see that's this one way up here. Uh, so if you don't have that light in there, just shift A to add in a light and then click light and point light is what I'm using here. But I'm going to set up our viewport and our light so that uh, it's a little easier to manipulate the light and orbit around our object. So I'm going to press N and come over to view and then lock 3D cursor or lock to 3D cursor. And that just means that when I rotate my view, it's going to rotate around the 3D cursor, which should be in the world origin. And if it's not, you can just shift S and then choose cursor to world origin. And now that's going to rotate the view around that. So another thing I'm going to do is come up to our pivot point and then choose 3D cursor. So anything that we have selected will rotate or move according to the 3D cursor. And this is just like we controlled the movement of our camera last time, except I'm going to do it with the light. So if I press R to rotate and then Z, it's going to orbit that light around the world origin there. I can also bring it closer to our object by pressing S to scale that in and out. And that's going to affect the brightness of the light on our object. So I'm going to bring that down just to maybe something around here. And then I'm going to select our toilet paper and zoom in there. Zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to hide our camera as well here. Let's scroll out here. Let's bring the light in just a little bit more. I'm just pressing S to scale that in. And something like that just so that I don't have to scroll out too far to see it. But of course you can see it's much too bright. So let's select our light, come to our light properties tab. And under point light, we have some options here. So of course the color is pretty straightforward. If you change the color, it's gonna emit that color onto our object. The next one is power. So this is a thousand watts, which we can bring down drastically. I'm gonna bring this down to 25. Let's see what that looks like. That looks maybe a little bit better. And see, I can still rotate around this object, even though my light is selected because we locked our rotation to the 3D cursor. Okay, so then the next one is specular, and that is the shine. So if I uh, rotate it down like this, you can see that shine making this look more like it's made out of a flat plastic rather than um, soft paper. So uh, in order to change that, I can just bring the specular of my light all the way down and you can see that it gets rid of those shines. Now I'm not gonna do it this way. There's another way that we'll do it. So I'm just gonna crank that all the way back up. And then the next one is the radius. So if I scroll out here, you can see the radius is this ring around our light. Um, and if I bring that up, Increasing the radius will actually make things softer. So it soften, softens our shadows 
and it also diffuses our light. So uh, the bigger the radius, the lower or weaker the light is, and the softer the shadows. And uh, conversely, uh, if I bring this down to 0 0.01, we have harsher shadows, and then if I make that brightness all the way up, now we have almost just a line for that shadow. So of course this is all personal preference, so I'm just going to mess with the radius and the power to get the look that I want. I think I want to make this one, and that's feet because I'm using the imperial system here, and then for this one I'm going to bring that down to 25, and I think that looks good right, like that right there. And if we want to quick adjust the brightness, we can always just select our light and then scale it in which just gives us a, a quick option to change that. Okay, so let's take care of this uh, shine that you can see here. Uh, let's go, instead of the light, let's select our object and then come to our Material tab. And this is where we've been using the base color, so our Texture 03, and in our Principled Shader. So if we scroll down, uh, you can see this slider called Roughness. So all I have to do is bring the roughness all the way up, and that's going to get rid of our shine there. And I like to do it this way. Let's turn off our overlays. Uh, instead, because if I do it with the light, then it's light specific. So if I add more lights to it, I have to do that with every light. But uh, this I want to be object specific. So I want this particular object not to have the shine on it. Um, but I do want maybe the shine on something else with the same light if I add another object in there. Okay, so this is looking pretty good here, I think. Um, but uh, this panel over here it only gives us limited information. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look under the hood at what's going on here. So to do that, let's come over to our shading workspace. And let's uh, adjust our view so that uh, it matches what we had in our layout view. Lock that to the 3D cursor and then adjust it like this. Okay, and I'm gonna bring this up here a little bit. And now you can see uh, we have our texture here. This is in our material, or our material TP01. And if we select our object, go to a material tab, you can see that's what this is. This is what our principled shader and everything is. You can see our TP texture 03 is this here. And that is what is plugged into our base color here. And if you see that over here, that's the same thing, our base color. If I change this back to our placeholder, you can see it changes to that black placeholder texture, and you can see placeholder here. So if I change it here, back to texture 03, then it changes it over here. So these two are the same thing, and you can see linear, flat, repeat, single image, the same options are over here. And then you have the actual shader. Now this is what's giving it all of the sh shadow information. It's calculating what the object does when light bounces off of it. You can see here's where we cranked up that roughness, and that is all the same options that we have over here. Here's our roughness. If I change that, you can see it changes it in both places. And then the principled shader uh, comes out here and is plugged into the surface of the material output, and that is what you see in the viewport display. So I'm going to go ahead and select only my principled shader and then press X to delete. And now we don't have anything going into the output, so we have all black. So now if I just drag the color output of our texture node and plug that right into the surface of the output, you can see we have just our texture again. And so there's no lighting information on this. And so that's what shaders do. So in order for our object to have any sort of shading information, there has to be something here to define what that is. Um, and you can also tell that this color output is yellow and this input for the surface is green. Generally speaking, you want to match up the colors to these output and inputs. And so already we know that these two shouldn't be matching up like this. So in order to add in a node here that will calculate our shading information, just come up to Add and then Shader or you can press shift A, add in a shader, and now you can see a list of a whole bunch of different shaders that will help calculate how light bounces off your object. So I'm just gonna choose the first one, diffuse up here, and this is the most simple, non-glossy, standard 
object surface. So if I hover this over the line, you can see it highlights and I just click to let go. And now we have a yellow output to a yellow input and then it translates it to a green output to a green input, which is what gives us our shading information up here. So this is our regular diffuse shader. So uh, we can mess with the roughness here, but uh, we don't actually have any specular. So we don't really need to do that for this one. And if you look over here again, this is our diffuse shader now instead of the principled. And we have our color, our texture 03 into the color, which is this. And then we have our roughness and then we have our normal, which is what we're going to talk about next. So everything is looking pretty good, I think, with our light and shading information there. Um, but there's still one more thing we can do to just add another level of realism to this. And that is make it look like it has a bumpy surface texture instead of this flat texture that you see right now because everything still looks pretty flat. So in the next video, we are going to add in a normal map and plug it in here to mix it with our texture to make it look like it has little bumps and grooves on it just like a regular toilet paper would. So let's go ahead and get started on that with the next one.